EJ here and today I'm going to do yet another very quick tutorial on how to remove the radio. This time we are on a BMW E92 uh, 20 template and I'm going to show you how to do it as quickly as possible. You're going to need something like a plastic scraper. Yeah. And the first thing you're going to do is pop it down the sides of your heater control panel and lever it on both sides. I think the other side's actually already gone. I've had a play with this already. Now when you do lever this, make sure you get it sort of middle middle of the way down, not at the top corner, because what will happen is the little fascia plastic here, this piece, will come away, look, and it can snap. So be very careful, make sure you get it fully in as much as possible, because when you pull it over, look, you've got these little clips. Now these little clips can be a right sod that can stick in place, so you can be putting a load of leverage on it, and all you'll be doing is bending these corners and you don't want to bend these corners or snap the corner so make sure you put your pry bar sorry not your pry bar bloody hell your pry uh, device halfway down to make sure the clip pops out once you've done that you've got these little slide connectors here just squeeze the pin in it's like a little push thing here push that in and pull ready to put one under there you go so you rotate the clip down pull up you don't have to remove the heater, strictly speaking, but it does make access a lot better. There we go. One out. Same again with this one. Just push the pin over and out. Yeah, that's your heater removed. And then you've got the radio itself. Under here, I've already removed them for the sake of this video, there's two cross-head screws. There you go. Normal cross-head, normal Phillips screwdriver there. Goes in there. There's one the other side. Just get some light on it, just there, look. There you go. So take those two out. It's quite literally a case of pull. Yeah? Pull the radio out. I suggest you put some padding or something down over your centre console because it can scratch. You've got steel at the bottom of it and it'll scratch plastic easily. At the back, just pull it up. You've got a quad lock connector. You squeeze the two tabs, one each side, like so. Push the bar down and then pull out to remove. The aerial is a FACRA aerial connection. Squeeze the tab. These can be tricky little sods to get off. Squeeze the tab and pull. Comes off. Remove your old radio. At which point you're left with a big gaping hole and you'll probably be getting something like a, a fascia panel such as this one to uh, put in the, in the space to put your normal radio in. Controllers, you're going to need an interface for those. I'm using this particular one here made by Auto Leads. And this cable comes as such, very simple. Quad lock on one end and just a normal ISO on the other to plug your radio into. The beauty with fitting one of these interfaces is it actually gives you a ignition switched power supply. If you just plug the radio in using a normal cable and feed everything off the main block here, you're not going to basically have any ignition switched. To get an ignition switched without using one of these cables, just simply run your main power cable to an ignition switch feed on the fuse box of the vehicle. I would not be tempted to run an ignition switch from the cigarette lighter on this vehicle because a lot of these do not have an ignition switched cigarette lighter socket. They have a permanent live socket, so it's a bit of a pointless uh, venture. So if you've got buttons on your steering wheel like those, interface like this, is the easiest route for you. Just get one of the interfaces, saves you doing a lot of wiring and messing around. Well, I hope this quick guide's helped. If it has, please click like on your way out. Much appreciated. Thanks for your time and goodbye.